I would like to share with you that uh, I have uploaded the Nokia spreadsheet and uh, we found this information that for the last 10 years, based on the last 10 years uh, data, uh, Nokia's beta uh, systematic risk is 0 0.66, okay? Uh, one more spreadsheet I want to share with you very quickly is uh, Kone. You know, the Kone is a very famous, uh, this elevator manufacturing company in, in Finland. It's a global company. And based on um, this data uh, that I have, some of my students, they were working on it. So we found that the beta is 0 0.19. So this is quite high beta, not, not extremely risky beta, but if you are a risk neutral investor, then this is a quite a sizable uh, level of beta. Uh, one more thing I would like to share with you is Kone comprehensive calculations. So you can see that, but I think before we, um, uh, this spreadsheet, which you see here uh, called uh, Kone Comprehensive Calculations. And this spreadsheet is also in Optima. Let me double check if you can see the screen here. Uh, Kone Comprehensive uh, Calculations. Um, beta of Kone was found to be 0 0.90. And this is found based on how many years? It was 1524. So I would say nearly six years, six years. Calculation we took and we did this uh, uh, calculation. Six years is, is, is a reasonable time. Um, but before I go to Capum, you can see that Uh, Kone, daily return is average of C2 to C1524. So which means that uh, C is Kone return, yeah? So that is the average. But this average is the average daily, right? The daily average. Uh, what we need is the annualized average, the how much, how much you earn every year. And then what we do here, we just do the formula, which we applied in the previous case also. Uh, the same way, the same way, there is a market, daily market return, which is this. So you can see the OMX Helsinki return. So this is uh, last six years data from the Helsinki Stock Exchange. And if you find the average, that would reveal that this is what people have been earning if they had invested in the market. You know, you can also invest in the index. And this is the annualized, so the annual, the same formula. So you can see that on an average, an investor is earning 14.62% in Kone, whereas the market is giving him or her 12.81%, uh, okay? Uh, the risk-free rate is 1% approximately in Finland. And I think we discussed what is risk-free rate. The risk-free rate is basically uh, the treasury bill rate. Treasury, which treasury? The state treasury. The risk-free rate is the rate at which the government can borrow on short-term basis. Because the government is a riskless entity, in, in theory, even the governments can become bankrupt. But in reality, the government is bailed out often, even though there is a severe crisis. 
There are many countries which survived the scare of getting bankrupt, approximately. Greece is one example. Uh, there has been problem in Spain. There has been problem in Portugal, Ireland. So potentially those economies could have become uh, bankrupt if they were not countries, but they, if they were companies. Do you get my point? Because the states have more resources. The biggest resource the state has is a printing press where they can print more money to finance at least for the short term basis. Okay, the companies don't have this luxury. Anyways, uh, this is how we calculate. Uh, now, what we do here, we calculate just like the you calculate the risk, uh, the return, we also need to calculate the risk. This is the formula of risk. The total daily risk, you can see, I apply the formula, standard deviation. Standard deviation, I hope you remember, is a, is a formula, is a measure of dispersion. I think I discussed in the class. Standard deviation is a measure of dispersion. Dispersion means scatterness, uncertainty. Standard deviation is a measure of risk, the total risk. Remember, beta is a measure of systematic risk. But systematic risk is one measure, one risk. We can measure total risk with the help of standard deviation. Standard deviation is a reflection of the total risk that company is exposed to, All right? Because you were having the daily stock return, you were capable of calculating the daily standard deviation, okay? And the formula is simple here. You just have to put STD, EV, standard deviation. But like you have annualized risk, uh, annualized return, you need to annualize the risk also. So what I do here, I apply the formula, uh, is one plus uh, risk, whatever, to the power of 250 minus one. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? So that, that gives us the annualized total risk. And then we have the market risk. Remember we have uh, E column, Helsinki stock exchange return. So we can see how much the stock, how much risk the stock market was facing. It was, uh, and when you annualize it, it becomes 15.73. Mm -hmm. Can you make out uh, a common theory that high return is accompanied by high risk? See the return of Nokia, uh, sorry, Kone and see the risk of Kone and compare it with return of the market and the risk of the market. Kone is earning 14.62, facing total risk 37.05%. The market is 12.81%. And the total risk they face, the market face is 15.73. So there's a more return in Kone than in the market, but then there's a more risk also. I would say substantial risk. Okay? Does it make sense or not? And then, if you are interested in bifurcating that out of total risk, how much is systematic risk and how much is unsystematic risk? We have formula. The formula is that the systematic risk, the total systematic risk is equal to F2 multiplied by K8. Question is who is F2? F2 is beta and K8, K8 is by the way, the total market standard deviation. So if you multiply K2 with, uh, sorry, F2 with K8, which means 
if you multiply beta with total annualized market risk, that will give you, that will give you what? That will give you total systematic risk. You have total risk, which an investor face, if he or she invests, invest in uh, Kone, out of which 14% uh, approximately is systematic risk, then what is left out? Well, this is your unsystematic risk. So total risk minus total systematic risk, that would leave total unsystematic risk. And if I convert it to percentage, it means that out of total risk, approximately 38% risk is coming from the market to Kone. And 62% is coming from within the company. So the unsystematic risk is huge in this case, nearly uh, 1.5 times or even more. Okay, so this is something very important. Uh, you, can, you can also do on this time that you can calculate the total risk you, you're exposed to. Of course, you will do it for your portfolio, yeah? Remember, you will do it for your portfolio. But there's no difference between portfolio and the company stock return because you make portfolio from the company returns by multiplying their weight. Remember the first task we did today? You were multiplying the weight, the relative share with the, each company stock return and then you add it up. So that would be just like the company stock return. There's no difference between portfolio return and the, the, the technique will, would still be the same. And by doing so, you can find out uh, the total risk, the total return, and then from total risk, you can do the post-mortem and you can find out that out of total risk, this much is coming because of the market and this much is coming because of the company itself. Systematic risk and unsystematic risk. And if you look at your task two or three, what you'll be doing that you will be calculating the risk and return on a date, yeah? And then you add more observations and then see that if risk and return has changed over time. If you look at your task, I can show it to you. Task three, for example, task two is a part of task three, basically. Uh, calculate and compare risk and return. Uh, calculate at two different periods from 10th Jan 2016 to 31st, and then 2009. And the difference would show, the difference would show uh, how much risk has changed and how much return has changed. So you start building up your portfolio from 2016 and you make it till 31st January, 2019. So let's say you start from uh, 16. And then you take the stock prices, everything, company, portfolio, market, and you do it till 31st January 2019. Okay. And here you calculate risk, systematic risk, unsystematic risk, return, and so on and so forth. And then you carry it on once again from 10th January 2016, all the way down to 31st. 19. All right. So don't get confused that you need only data from 10th January 2019 to 30th April 2019. No, even for this time, you, your starting point should be 2016. And then once you have two sets of calculation, risk, type of risk, return, then compare. Then compare that in these three months, of trading, how much return and how much risk has changed. It could be possible that your return has gone up, but your risk has gone up two, three, four times. Or it could be, could be possible that your systematic risk has gone up, but the unsystematic risk has come down. So you can have all kinds of observations. So that makes this, this makes this task very interesting that you are calculating all the statistics, risk, types of risk, return at one date, 
which is uh, 31st Jan 2019. And then you carry on as the course continues. And almost at the end of the course, uh, 30th April is almost end of the course, yeah? And then you are calculating um, how the risk and return has changed during these three months. All right, but to compare these three months, this time and this time, your starting point has to be same. And then you can find out the difference. So for example, at the end of your task, it will look like this. Um, so the first date would be uh, 31st January 19. And then 30th April 19. You have return here. Let's say X1, X2. Then you have risk here. Systematic risk. Unsystematic risk. Let's call it Y1, Y2. Let's call it A1, A2. Okay. And see that how they have changed. Compare. And then one more thing you need to calculate is Jensen's alpha, which I would teach you now. Uh, J alpha. Let's call it B1 and B2. Uh, let's call it B. You can, you can see it like this. Let's call it uh, uh, C1 and C2. So you'll be comparing them over time. Now here you can see the capital asset pricing model. This is one of the landmark theory of finance. Uh, any student of finance who have not studied CAPM, CAPM means capital asset pricing model, uh, then you're missing something in your life. Okay, this theory is very, uh, I'm using the original model given by uh, Markovich and the other scholars. And I must say that CAPM in my opinion, has won at least three Nobel Prize in economics so far. Uh, the original version, the modified version, and its application. So CAPM is a highly popular, the highly famous uh, theory in, in the world of finance. The formula of CAPM is this, basically. I can rewrite it. The formula as given by the CAPM is this. Let's say R Kone. R Kone means the minimum return which you must give to the investor of Kone. Remember, CAPM sets the floor, floor or the hurdle rate. It means that what should be the minimum return which you must produce so that your investor is satisfied? This is, is what determined by CAPM. And the formula is the minimum return which you should produce to keep the Kone investor happy is equal to our risk free rate which is normally the treasury bill rate, treasury, the state treasury, plus beta. I hope you know what is beta. Beta, the measure of systematic risk, times the market return. Have you seen market return so far? Have you done, have you done the calculation of market return so far or not? You have, you did in case of Kone, and uh, Nokia is the example. And here also you can see there is a annualized, uh, sorry, uh, annualized market return. This is RM, this is the market return. Minus, all right, the difference between RM and RF is called risk premium. Risk 
risk premium. Okay. So the risk premium is RM minus RF. The market return in this case, you can see is 12.8%. Yeah. Whereas the risk free rate is 1%. It means that an investor is very happy to take 1% from the state. But if he has to invest in the stock market, he, he requires 12.8%. So how much compensation investor wants to take the risk of stock price fluctuation is 12.8 minus 0.01. So approximately, uh, approximately it's 11%, uh, more than 11%, I would say is the risk premium, yeah? CAPM, as I said, sets the floor, is a hurdle rate, you know? See what, have you seen the hurdle race? 100, 110 meter hurdles, I guess, in, the, in athletics? It doesn't matter how high you jump over the hurdle. You can jump over the hurdle by one inch or by one foot. The point is that you must not touch the hurdle or you must not be below the hurdle because if you are, then you are disqualified from the race. Or basically, even if nobody disqualifies you, you will not be able to run because you will hurt your foot. You won't be able to run. So to be successful, one condition is that you must jump over the hurdle. CAPM sets the minimum hurdle. If your actual return is over the hurdle, you are overperforming but if your actual return is below the capm return then you are underperforming do you get my point or not so you can see here if i calculate here can you see expected return this expected return is given by CAPM model. And can you see all the inputs? The input is H5. What is H5? Well, H5 is RF, risk-free rate, which is here. Plus beta, F2, F2 is beta, here. Multiply RM, H9, what is H9? H9 is the Kone, uh, sorry, uh, H9 is uh, OMX Helsinki annualized return, market return minus RF H5. So primarily, I'm only using the CAPM model in reality, okay? 11.66%. Any investor in Kone would be requiring minimum, minimum 11.66%. And what you're producing is 14.62%, all right? And if you, your actual performance, listen carefully, if your actual performance is more than the minimum required, then you overperform, okay? Can you see here? H7 is the actual performance and H11 is the minimum required performance. And the difference is what called Jensen's alpha. The difference between actual performance and the required performance is called Jensen's alpha. I repeat, Jensen's alpha shows the difference between the actual performance of the company and the minimum expected performance. And who gives you the minimum expected performance? CAPM. CAPM gives you what is a minimum expectation. The minimum expectation was 11.66%, but you produced 14.62%. The difference is approximately 
this is the over performance the length of the distance that you jump over the hurdle is called Jen jensen's alpha how high you jump over so the hurdle was 11.66 but the jump is 14.62 it means that you jump over the hurdle by 2.95 percent hence your jensen's alpha is positive positive means you overperform. now imagine this is 11.66 and this is 9.62 then this would have been negative if this was low this was lower and this was higher this is 11 and this is 9 then this would have been negative negative means the company is underperforming hmm? yeah does it make sense if you see now there are three three returns here one is the company's actual return mark my words the company's actual returns this is company's theoretical return or the minimum return and this is the market return sorry uh, this is the market return yeah so the company is not only beating the market but company is also beating itself i'm giving you a very big statement that when i compare this and this it seems that company has beaten the market but when i see this and this i see that the company has beaten itself also beaten itself what does it mean i want to give you an example you are my students i know you you sit in the exam the one way of assessing you in the exam is that i check i check your actual performance with the average performance let's say you get 80 marks and the class average is 60. i can say that you have overperformed yeah the one thing is that when you are coming to the classroom to the lecture theater i know that i know this student this student i know her class you know performance assignments performance i think this student should get four grades minimum you know i can i can put some values to some value judgment to all of you that i think this student deserve to get four i think this student may get three this may i i, I think if he can't even pass you know these are some mental calculations these are some kind of perceptions this is the perception 